Hello, guys. I'm joined today by Nathan Hirsch, who's one of the awesome guys who's created uh, FreeUp, which has hired lots and lots of virtual assistants. He's now created Ecom Balance. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and I'm super excited to, to have this chat today. So, Nathan, thanks for joining us. Stephen, uh, thanks so much for having me. And I also got to say, so so I sold free up two years ago. I kind of disappeared from the e-commerce space, came back. Took a and, little break, yeah. Yeah, over and over, people are like, you got to talk to Stephen Pope. You got to talk to Stephen Pope. And I, I think <laughs> it speaks for your marketing over the past two years, but also just the respect people have for you. Everyone had great things to say. I was in a conference in New York. People were saying, I got to talk to you. So it's a, it's a privilege to be on. Well, I appreciate that. The first virtual assistant I ever hired was also from FreeUp. So right back at you on that. Um, I know um, we're going to be talking a little bit about bookkeeping. We're going to talk a little bit about um, all, all things e-commerce. Um, before we dive into that, uh, can you tell us just a little bit about why or how you had your e-commerce journey? Tell me a little bit of origin story here. Yeah. So I, I always had a lot of real jobs growing up from the point I, I was 15 on. I had summer internships and I was working during every vacation and after school and, and all of that. And uh, I, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I, I hated working for other people. And when I got to college, I started buying and selling people's textbooks on the side and competing with my school bookstore to the point where they sent me a, a cease and desist letter to knock it off and, and stop stealing their business. And nice. That ended up being one, one of the best things that ever happened to me because I had this Amazon account. I was selling some books on it and I started to explore what I could do that that wasn't textbooks. And I started drop shipping from different retailers, eventually manufacturers, years before I even knew it was called drop shipping. I would call people up and say, hey, I, he, I have an alternate sales channel for you. You can keep my credit card on file. You just ship stuff where I tell you to. You can charge me. And I started building all these relationships. And uh, I met my business partner, Connor, in college as well. So we're, we're running this multi-million dollar Amazon business out of my college frat house, making every good and bad decision that you could possibly make as an entrepreneur and, and just learning a lot. And one thing that we learned is college kids were very unreliable when it came to, to really hiring them uh, for our business, which is how we, we turned to the VA world got really good at hiring virtual assistants and freelancers to the point where we started kind of leasing them out and offering them to other Amazon sellers who were also struggling to hire. And that became the, the free up marketplace, an e-commerce hiring platform. We, we eventually decided to focus on that. It was kind of our first experience growing a brand and not being dependent on Amazon and learning SEO and learning marketing and going on podcasts. And it was a lot of fun. And we scaled that business for four years uh, before being acquired by by one of our clients, which was a, is a whole other story uh, we can get into it if you want. And from there, what the original plan was to to take a year off and and travel. the The pandemic hit, so we were kind of stuck at home, and we launched this course called Outsource School, which we still run today, and it helps people hire using our unique hiring process. But it also just bought us a lot of time to, to figure out what we really want to do next. And we've always been good at finances, whether it's making good decisions every month or obviously passing due diligence. And that gave us the idea to, to start this monthly bookkeeping service for e-com sellers uh, called Ecom Balance. So that's kind of the, the short, long story. The short, long story. I love it. So I, I think that you've had a major impact on the hiring and the culture of e-commerce uh, in general. Can you just share like one tip on on how people can think about hiring virtual assistants? Yeah, sure. So I always like to divide it up into followers, doers, and experts because as you grow as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to hire all three levels. And a lot of people just have the wrong idea of what a follow is or, or what a virtual assistant is. To me, the virtual assistants are followers. They might have years of experience. I'm not hiring someone who's never done customer service before to do my customer service, but I'm still teaching them my way to go about it. I have systems, I have processes. I'm not just hiring a VA and saying, go find me profitable products with, with no directions. That's not gonna work out. So. The followers are your virtual assistants. They're great if you have systems, you have processes. The doers are more of the specialists. They're graphic designers. They're doing Amazon listings, whatever it is. They're usually doing the same thing eight to 10 hours a day. You're not teaching them how to do Amazon listings, but they're also not really consulting with you either. They're there to do that one specific job. 
And then you got the experts, like the agencies, the coaches, the consultants, the higher level people, that it's a little bit more of a collaboration. You're hiring them for their expertise. You could spend the next six months trying to learn PPC, but that's not necessarily a good use of your time. You might be better off hiring that expert. So that's how I like to think about it. Great. And and so you've you've hired a lot of people and you figured out that, you know, the guys in the Philippines are a little detail oriented, are they not? Yeah. So I, I get this question a lot of why hire from the Philippines. And it kind of starts with my my basic mentality where, where I think people go wrong is they'll hire like a few people from the Philippines, a few people from India, a few people from Pakistan or from South America. And they just have this team of people all over the world. And in my opinion, especially if you're new to hiring, you're just adding a lot more work to your plate. They, they speak different languages. They have different cultures. They, they might not work well together. They work different time zones. You just have a lot of things that you have to put together to run a very high efficient team. So I feel like you're better off picking one place at least to start and at least until you get good at it. And if you're going to pick one place, Philippines is a fantastic place to start. I mean, the cost of living is lower. They learn English in school. They're all about building a family and something, some kind of long-term family stability, which is great if you're a culture junkie like me and you're, you're trying to build a place that everyone enjoys being there and, and treats the business uh, like your family. So, and I can go on and on, but again, you want to pick one place and the Philippines kind of has the, the lowest learning curve and obviously some very high level, very qualified people as well. All right. So that detail hook, we're going to kind of tie that into what you're up to now. So you started Ecom Balance and tell me a little bit about that, what you're trying to do there. Yeah. yeah. So again, my, my overall entrepreneur mentality is that entrepreneurs should not be doing their own books. I mean, first of all, it's just not a good use of your time. Anytime you're spending. What do you mean? I can't read my own books? <laughs> that's, Book that's what we're talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, so you shouldn't be spending, I, there's so many entrepreneurs that spend hours every month reconciling accounts, trying to take a QuickBooks course and learning how to do it. Uh, but it's not a good use of your time. You should focus on growing your business, expansion, marketing. And then second of all, nine times out of 10, if you do your own books, it's just going to have to get redone later by someone who really knows what they're doing. Most entrepreneurs just aren't good at it. And then you kind of fall into the trap of what I used to do with my Amazon business, where you don't do your books all year and you kind of just dump it on your account at the end of the year. And not only is that not good for uh, pricing, they're going to overcharge you and, and kind of um, not get it, but it's not good for getting real information that you can make decisions on each month. And one of the best things we did at FreeUp was we hired a bookkeeper early on. The month would end within 10 to 15 days of the month being over every single month we would have a meeting with our business partners our team leaders and make good decisions based on what the numbers are actually telling us comparing it to last month the same month last year and that's how you should be running your books and then there's some added bonuses where it's less stressful at the end of the year for taxes um if you're trying to get funding or get an investor or sell your company the due diligence process is a lot less stressful and easier to get through with clean books and you can get a higher multiple but the whole goal of econ balance is a monthly bookkeeping service where it's hands off for you and every month like clockwork you get the books within the 10th to the 15th and can make real decisions for your business well i i think you might be onto something here so what what have you learned so far as as you've gone about building this out yeah, a lot. I mean, we we started off by just interviewing 200 plus e-commerce sellers and also just people in the space that have sold businesses or business brokers and just kind of learning what they see when it comes to, to e-commerce bookkeeping. And I, a lot of bookkeepers don't understand e-commerce. There's also a, a gap that I think we can fill where we're e-commerce sellers first. We're entrepreneurs first. We speak entrepreneur. We know the way that entrepreneurs need to receive information to make decisions and a lot of times bookkeepers aren't able to speak that. They might be good at bookkeeping, but they can't actually put things in a way that the average entrepreneur can understand. There's also a lot that goes into just Amazon and dealing with reports there. A lot of people will take the amount that's deposited in their bank account, and that'll be the top line in their income statement, when really it's the Amazon report, it's all your sales minus fees, and then just getting it into QuickBooks, you need a connection software like A2X. On top of that, there's cost of goods and how you factor that in, doing your books on accrual instead of cash basis, which a lot of people do wrong, which can really hurt your evaluation. So there's a lot of just nuisances that come when it comes to e-commerce bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is really boring, Nathan. I want to, <laughs> I, I just want to get rid of it. 
I like unsexy businesses, right? Hiring and bookkeeping, things that that apply to everything, but people hate doing. And that's the beauty of it is as an entrepreneur, you don't need to log into your QuickBooks. You don't need to actually do the books. You do need to get good reports and understand the financials in your business and make good decisions off of it. And and that's kind of where I draw the line. You should be able to read financials and we can help you with that without actually having to do the bookkeeping. Okay. So what have you learned as an entrepreneur? I really kind of want to zero in on you like doing boring businesses. You went from book selling to hiring to hiring is probably the most interesting um, from, from like, uh, you know, people are interesting. Right. And then you went back to the numbers and the books again. Right. So why, why is that? Yeah. I mean, there, there's certain things we look for in, in any business we start. I mean, big markets is one of them. Every business needs to hire. Every business needs to do bookkeeping. Um, there's other things like, like reoccurring revenue and a service that we feel like will be here in 20 years. Like maybe Facebook ads are here in 20 years. Maybe they're not. No one really knows. The chances are bookkeeping will be. Um, the ability to to hire and, and build a high level team for it is important to us. I mean, there's certain businesses out there that have just very unique services that are tougher to to hire for. And we also just love the e-commerce space. It's a space that we're in. It's not like we're going to start a a dog walking business and just go off the rails and start something that has nothing to do with anything we've ever done before. So it's kind of our unique way to to stay in the e-commerce space, but do something different than the the VAs and freelancers that we've, that we've done in the past. So as you've talked to all these business owners, like what are some of the things that you've learned, whether it's about selling on Amazon, whether it's about learning how to run a business? Tell me, tell me some things you've learned along the way. Yeah. I mean, you can't do everything, right? Like hiring, hiring people and promoting from within and having team leaders that can take ownership of different parts of your business is incredibly important. I mean, you, you have a big team, you know, this, you, there's not enough hours in the day for, for you to do everything. And there's a certain level of trust. And I have a a business partner too, who we have the exact same values. We believe in in treating customers the same way. We believe in scaling businesses the, the proper way and not doing shortcuts. But we also have the exact opposite skill sets. He's good at building websites and SEO and a lot of the back end marketing. I'm much better at the processes and the, the customer interaction and, and being the face going on podcasts. So finding some people that you can work with that, that really complement your skills, whether it's business partners, uh, people on your team, or even surviving yourself with the surrounding yourself with the bookkeepers, the lawyers, the accountants, the people that have that specific skill set that you're never going to have that can help you take your business to the next level and make good decisions. That's kind of the key to all of it. And, and that's what makes you look good as an entrepreneur. You, you're, most entrepreneurs are good at one or two specific things and you want to stay in your lane while surrounding yourself with all the people that can do all the other stuff. Well, those are some wise words. How did you figure that out? Did you make some mistakes? Of course. I I made numerous mistakes. I mean, here's a kind of a funny story. So with my Amazon business, I I went on vacation to Myrtle Beach and I'll probably never go back. On the first day of my vacation, I, I got three phone calls. So the first call was from my manager who was quitting on me. So I had one manager running my whole Amazon business. Boom. Oh, six months, eight months of training down the drain. Second from our one supplier who dropped us. So I lost my manager. I lost my one supplier. And then just to top it off, uh, my accountant called me and said that someone had filed a fake tax return in my name and stolen $40,000 from the government. Jeez, Louise. So it was a rough day. The The tax thing ended up not being a big deal. It wasn't my money. And I have to I have a pin with my taxes every year going forward. So that that was resolved. But I learned some valuable lessons about diversifying and not having one person that manages everything and having a team leader for billing, a team leader for customer service, a team leader for marketing. I also learned about diversification and not having one supplier that you're depending on for your whole business. And I went out and built relationships with hundreds of suppliers. And same thing with free up. We weren't just offering customer service. We were offering all these other services too. So in case one thing, Amazon changes something and let's say PPC is no longer relevant. I know that's a bad example, but you still are protected in other ways. And same thing with with econ balance, just diversifying across the board. So there's lots of lessons. Entrepreneurship, it's a lot of ups and downs. There, There are a lot of ups and downs, aren't there? Um, okay. So that was a fantastic story. I can't believe, uh, in one day you had your manager quit your accountant call you, your supplier just crap out. Like that's amazing amount of bad luck for a single day on a vacation to Myrtle beach. 
I mean, we had, for years we had PTSD over it. Now it's kind of funny because <laughs> like, we're like, I go on so vacation. <laughs> exactly. That that's the issue with it. Next time you're on vacation, you're just waiting for those phone calls. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Okay, so um, when you open up a business's books, you can kind of paint a story and and figure out something pretty quick. Like the the thirty second gut check, you look at something and you're like, I know something's wrong. <laughs> Can you give me an example of what that would look like and how somebody would know like, oh my gosh, my books are just awful and here's the problem and here's the solution? Yeah, I mean, so there's like business issues and there, there's bookkeeping issues. I, some common stuff for for just the, the era that we live in with segmentation, you might be selling on Amazon Japan, Amazon US, Amazon UK. You might have five different SKUs and only one of them is profitable. And you don't really know because you haven't been doing your bookkeeping and you're just seeing money going into your bank account. But when you actually break it down, you've been wasting a lot of time on stuff that's not really making you money. And there's kind of that 80, 20 rule as an entrepreneur to really make sure that you focus your time on what's making you the most money. And if you don't actually have your books and you're just doing it on gut or money in your bank account or whatever it is, you can't make those decisions and, and be and be able to say no or be able to cut back or be able to, to kind of focus your time. So so here's here's a real world example. So I just raised the price of this three pack from eight dollars to ten dollars because I wasn't able to make a profit on the eight dollar. And my last leader strategy wasn't panning out as well as I wanted it to, where I wanted to get high velocity so people would pick up the six, the twelve, and the hundred pack. Right now it, it is overall working, but it was a little challenging. How would you see this from the books and how would you say like, Hey, Steven, you need to go from eight to $10 instead of just wing it. How would you figure that out by looking at someone's books? Yeah. I mean, you'd want to segment your books by SKU so you can see what is your actual top line sales. And then what are the fees associated with it? Whether it's shipping costs, whether it's PPC, what are the actual gross margins on those products? So you can decide if you want to raise the price. Um, and then inventory and cost of goods factors in as well. I mean, we live at a time where um, getting inventory is expensive. Shipping and logistic costs are going up. That may be the case long term. That could also resolve itself quickly. So not everything is kind of a, a cut and dry black decision. But if you're able to see, hey, my margins on this have been decreasing every month for the past three month, months, that might be a sign that, hey, I either need to lower my costs or I need to raise my price or both. And and is it, uh, oh, hit the wrong button there. So so as we, how do you feel about raising prices right now with the inflation rate? I personally believe it's 25%. Government says it's eight. I think they're liars. Um, do When you look at these books, do you think people need to be raising their prices this year? Yeah, it's a good question. It's tough to, to put every product in the same category. I mean, if you look at like Chipotle, who has a lot of pricing power, they can raise their burritos to $11 and people are still going to buy those burritos. Yeah, that's, that's me. That's me. Yeah, I, that's me too. I love, I love my Chipotle. Um, but you look at other stuff that that people are, are not willing to, to spend more on for whatever reason. And as we go into a recession or don't go into a recession or whatever happens, that, that can change. People start cutting back on luxury items and start, but they still buy the necessities, the basics. So it kind of depends where you fall in that. I know I'm kind of going around the, the answer to your question, but I, I wouldn't just say blank slate, raise all your prices because of inflation. I think it also depends on, on your product and what category it falls into. Well, I totally agree with that. Um, I just think that at least 80% of people are going to raise their prices this year, just based on what I'm seeing. Okay, cool. So any other kind of macro things you've, you've been able to pick up on when you look at people's books that maybe people will find interesting or curious? Yeah. I mean, a big part of having clean books is being able to sell your business in the future. And that's not something you necessarily have to do, but it's good to, to have that option in your back pocket. The The six months it took to sell free up was the most stressful six months of my life by far. Like and that. And that's with clean, immaculate books. Like we had everything going back. We the, the phone calls they had initially where they asked us questions matched exactly what was in our books when we sent it to them. But there, there are lawyers, there's other parties involved. And while it's the biggest moment of our life for the lawyers, it's just another Tuesday. They have other clients, they go on vacation, they've got other stuff going on. So having bad books is going to delay the process. It's going to break down trust when it goes to the buyer. And there's certain things that also just hurt you on multiple, multiple. So Joe Valia of Quiet Light has this in his book, Exitpreneur, where if you're not doing your books on accrual, you're, you're really leaving money on the table. If you think of it, like, let's say you buy $50,000 worth of inventory and that just shows up on January January might show a big loss where 
February, March, and April might show big profits because you didn't buy inventory those months, but that doesn't really tell you anything. You want to do it on an accrual basis and that's going to stuff like that helps you get good multiples. There's also certain things that, that helped us, um, just get higher, not necessarily higher multiples, but a higher amount to be the multiple stuff like conferences, uh, things that are one-time expenses. You can actually deduct it and take them off the expense list when you go to sell because the person buying the company doesn't necessarily have to go to that same conference every single year. Like they have to pay your, your employee every single year. So being able to, to have your books with the proper chart of accounts, the proper expenses allows you to, to deduct stuff away, which is going to give you a higher EBITDA, which eventually gives you a higher number one. When you get into the multiple. Mohammed off LinkedIn says, indeed, we look into competitors uh, at what price they're selling as FBA fees increase impacts every seller's profit margin. Uh, yep, I agree, Mohammed. We're seeing that. Um, all right. So, so Nathan, um, what's next for, for e-commerce? Why, you know, you, you, you are all in on e-commerce. You're, you're saying this thing is a great thing to hitch to. What do you see coming out next? I mean, I think we live in that era of the brands. Like to me, it, it's, you've got the, the Amazon businesses, you've got the Amazon brands, and then you've got the real brands. And I think the people that that migrate more towards the real brands and, and getting being able to sell on Shopify, get in stores, or uh, be able to drive traffic to Amazon through influencers and not necessarily just depending on, on PPC. I think that's the, the way that everything's going. That's a guess. Everything could change. Um, I also think supply chain issues are, are temporary, whether that's six months, two years, who knows what that actual timeline is. I don't think we're going the rest of our life with supply chain issues. So once that stuff gets resolved, that people from the pandemic have, have mentally turned more and more to e-commerce. I mean, so I play softball. In my life, I've always gone to the store and buy a softball glove. Well, I, for the first time, ordered a softball glove online. And for other people that might not be softball, but more and more people are making more and more purchases that way, um, opposed to what they would have done in the past. And then you mentioned Joe Valley's book. Any other business books you think people should read this year? Yeah, I like uh, Tools of Titan. It, I like to, to kind of diversify myself. I feel like it gets a little boring if you're just like business, 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 sales, <laughs> marketing books. So uh, Tools of Titan is a great one. It's probably behind me somewhere. One of my favorite books. Um, it's a lot of small blurbs from different interviews. So sometimes I'll just pick it up and read something random about health or wealth or, or whatever it is. I'm looking it up right now to check that one out. Thank you for that recommendation. All right. So you are uh, the founder of Econ Balance. Is that what your title is these days? Yeah. And and if somebody wants to learn more or potentially they're, they're an Amazon brand, they're, they're, they're an e-commerce business, what should they do to check you out if they want to learn more? Yeah. Feel free to connect with me on social media, Nathan Hirsch. I'm pretty easy to contact. Love connecting with entrepreneurs. Uh, you can see on the site, you get one free month, but if you mention this podcast or, or this live, um, you'll get two free months. So go to econbalance.com, create a free account right on the homepage, submit pricing so we can get you a quote or our pricing quote to get you uh, our pricing form to get you a quote. Um, and from there, we'll give you two free months of bookkeeping to, to try us out. And we love feedback. We have a lot of work to do to build processes, but we, we love to just hear from clients on, on how to improve everything across the board. Well, perfect. Thanks so much for joining us today, Nathan. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, hearing from the titans of e-commerce uh, since we're going to tie that into your book reference there. So love you are it. a titan, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on and, and hopefully we meet in person soon. All right. Sounds like a plan. We'll see you guys.